the route redistribution issue we saw in our prior video had a single point, it was router R2, where route redistribution was happening. However, if we were designing a network ourselves, we might look at that redistribution point and think that that's a potential single point of failure. Instead, we might want to have two or more routers that are redistributing between different autonomous systems, different routing domains. We can certainly do that, but in some cases that might introduce a bit of a troubleshooting issue. For example, let's say that router 2 on screen wants to send uh, traffic to the 10.1.1.0/24 network. And router R2's IP routing table says that the next hop is router RD1, which is a router that's doing redistribution. RD1 sends the packets down to router R1, and interestingly, router R1 sends the packets on to RD2, and RD2 sends those packets back into our original autonomous system. That could be suboptimal routing. We're leaving our routing domain, going through another routing domain, another autonomous system, and then coming back into our own routing domain. And you might run into a situation like this depending on how many domains you have, how many boundary routers you have, what specific routing protocols you're using, how things are configured. And in this video, we want to talk mostly in theory about how we would troubleshoot an issue like this. What we could do is set really, really high metric values on a route that's being redistributed into a routing domain. That way, if I'm in autonomous system number two, and I'm trying to send packets to a destination that also lives in autonomous system number two, I'm probably not going to be leaving my autonomous system because the metric would be too high to go through another autonomous system. It would be a much lower metric to stay within my own autonomous system. Something else we might do to combat a situation like this is to statically set the administrative distance for a routing protocol. Remember that RIP has a default administrative distance of 120, OSPF has a default administrative distance of 110, EIGRP has a default administrative distance of 90, except for external routes that get injected into EIGRP, those have an administrative distance of 170. In fact, since EIGRP does distinguish between externally learned routes and routes learned within the autonomous system, and uh, it gives a higher administrative distance to those externally learned routes, EIGRP by itself does a great job of preventing a situation like this from happening. But depending on what routing protocol you're using and how things are configured, you might in some cases need to statically configure the administrative distance for a routing protocol. So let's hop out to a live interface real quick and let's take a look at how easy it is to set the administrative distance for a routing protocol. I'm sitting on router RD1 and it is configured for route redistribution. And if we do a show IP route, we can see that we've learned routes via OSPF, we've learned routes via EIGRP, and notice the ADs, the administrative distances of these different routing protocols. EIGRP has an AD of 90, that's the default. OSPF has an AD of 110, that's the default. However, in some troubleshooting scenarios, we might want to make OSPF more believable than EIGRP. Here's how we could do that. We could give the distance command. And by the way, that command works not just with OSPF, it also works with EIGRP, it works with RIP. Here's how we do it. We go into router configuration mode for OSPF, process ID 1, and I'm going to say distance. And we give the new AD. I'm going to make it 80. I want to make it more believable than EIGRP. And now if I look at my IP routing table again, look at this. My OSPF routes now have a more believable administrative distance than EIGRP. It's now 80 for OSPF, and you'll see that I don't have any EIGRP learned routes in the IP writing table now because I've learned all of them via OSPF. That's interesting. But something important to realize is that this AD of 80 is only locally significant. It only applies to router RD1 where I've configured it. In other words, this AD is not being advertised out to other routers. This is not going to influence the routing decisions that other routers make. This only influences RD1. Another way for us to overcome this potential routing loop is to filter routes as they're redistributed. For example, if we know all of the 172.16.0.0/16 networks reside in routing domain 1, we might go into the routers redistributing into that routing domain and filter that route out. After all, that route lives in that domain. No sense advertising that route into the domain from another domain. And you could use a route map to do that filtering. 
Another fairly clever way to overcome this routing loop issue is to tag a route as it's being redistributed from one routing domain into another. And when I talk about the tags, please realize we can use these for lots of different reasons, not just for redistribution. But what is a tag? It's a value that we can assign to a route. And a tag isn't really measuring anything. It's not a specific unit of measure for bandwidth or delay or anything like that. It's just a label that we put on a route. Let's check out an example of what we could do with tags. What we could do is say that we want to assign a tag of 10 to routes being redistributed into Autonomous System 1 on screen. And I've just drawn it for router RD1, but we would do the same thing for router RD2. But in addition to setting the tag to 10 for routes going into Autonomous System 1, what if we did this also? What if we said that we're going to deny any routes from being redistributed that had a tag of 10? In the example on screen, we've got a route going from Autonomous System 2 into Autonomous System 1, but as that route gets redistributed, it's given a tag of 10. And RD1 in this example is assigning that tag. If that same route were to then try to come back into Autonomous System 2 via RD2, that's not going to be allowed because RD2 is going to have a route map that says we're not going to allow the redistribution of any route that has a tag of 10 going into Autonomous System 2. Let's go out to a live interface now and take a look at how we can configure these tags. We're here again on router RD1 and what we want to do is to say if we're redistributing a route from EIGRP into OSPF, we want to give it a label. We're going to give it a tag of 10 and we can do that with a route map. Let's go into global configuration mode and let's create a route map. I'll say route hyphen map tag 10. I don't need to say permit and I don't need to give a sequence number because the default is permit and I'm only going to give one instruction. I'm going to say set the tag to 10. And that's the first of our two route maps we need to create. Let's create a second route map. I'm going to say route hyphen map. This time it's going to be deny tag 10. And I will say deny this time and I'll give it a sequence number. What am I wanting to deny? I'm wanting to deny routes that have a tag of 10. So I will say match tag 10 and we're going to deny those from being redistributed from OSPF back into EIGRP, thus breaking that potential routing loop. However, I want to allow other traffic to be redistributed. I need to allow everything else. So we need to give a second route map statement for the deny tag 10 route map. I'll say route hyphen map deny tag 10. I'll give a higher sequence number. This time I'll say permit and we're going to permit everything else. No need to match anything because the default is going to match everything. Now that we've got these route maps created, let's apply them to our routing processes. Let's go into router OSPF process ID 1. I'm going to reissue the redistribute command that I already had for this routing process. I'm going to say redistribute EIGRP Autonomous System 1. I'm going to include the subnets keyword and I'm also going to apply the route map of tag 10. What I'm doing is assigning a tag of 10 to routes being redistributed into OSPF from EIGRP. Now let's apply the other route map to the EIGRP routing process. We'll say router EIGRP Autonomous System 1 and let's reissue the redistribute command for the EIGRP writing process. By the way, I already have a command underneath this writing process that sets the default metric, so I don't need to specify the metric on this command line. But I will say redistribute OSPF process ID 1 and I'm going to apply the route map of deny tag 10. You see what I'm doing? I'm saying if I'm redistributing it into EIGRP from OSPF, I'm going to deny any routes that have a tag of 10. And in this example, I did this to one of my redistribution points, RD1. I won't take the time in this video to show it, but to complete the configuration, I would need to do the same thing on router RD2, which is my other redistribution point. And that's a look at a few different ways that we can troubleshoot a routing loop that might occur when we're doing a mutual route redistribution between a couple of different routing domains and we have more than one redistribution point. <music>